Solving radical equations. Made easy. Example number one, we have radical x minus five is equal to three. Whenever we're dealing with radicals, what we want is the radical to be on one side and everything else to be on the other side. In this case, it's already like that, so that's fine. To get rid of this radical, what we have to do is the opposite. Just like when something is multiplied by something, you divide, which is the opposite. In this case, we're gonna have to raise it to a certain power. And now whenever it's a square root, that means that there's supposed to be a little two right in there. So basically we raise it to whatever that number is gonna be. In this case, it's a square root. That means it's a two. That means we're gonna have to square this entire thing. And what you do to one side, you have to do to the other, like that. And now what happens when you square a square root is that these are going to cancel. So the radical sign is gonna cancel with that. What we're gonna have left over is just what's on the inside, which is gonna be x minus five. And that's gonna be equal to three squared, which is nine. From here, what we're gonna do is add five to both sides. So plus five, plus five. These fives cancel, and what we have left is x is equal to nine plus five, which is 14. So this right here is our solution. However, whenever we're dealing with radicals, we always wanna check our answers to make sure it's correct. So the way you check it is you just plug in this x into our equation, and I'm gonna show it for this example, but I'm gonna skip it for the rest of them. So we'll have the square root of 14, since that's what x is equal to, minus five, is equal to 3. 14 minus 5 is the square root of 9, which is equal to 3. And that means that 3 is equal to 3. Therefore, this answer is correct. Example number 2, we have the cube root of 6x plus 4 plus 7 is equal to 11. The first thing we want to do is isolate the radical to get that by itself on one side and move everything else over to the other side. So that means that we're going to subtract 7 from both sides. And when we do that, these 7s are going to cancel and we'll have the cube root of 6x plus 4 is equal to 11 minus 7 is 4. From here, we want to get rid of that radical sign. And whenever you see this number on the inside, in this case it's a 3, that means we're going to have to raise both sides to the third power. So I'm going to raise both sides to the third power like that. What you do to one side, you do to the other. Now this radical sign is going to cancel with this third power, and what we're going to have left is just the inside, which is 6x plus 4 is equal to 4 cubed is going to be 64. And now we just isolate x. We're going to subtract 4 from both sides. These 4s are going to cancel. And what we have left over is 6x is equal to 60. To get x by itself, we divide by 6 to both sides. And then these sixes here cancel, and what we're gonna have is x is equal to 10. So this right here is the solution that we found. Now the last step is to plug it in and check if the answer is correct. In this case, it is. So x equals 10 is gonna be our final answer. Example number three, we wanna solve this problem right here. So first step, as always, is to get the radical by itself. That means I want to move this 2 over to the right hand side. In doing that, these 2's are going to cancel, and what we're going to have is the square root of x squared plus 5x plus 11 is equal to 5. From here, what we want to do is cancel this square root sign, so since it's a square root, what we need to do is raise it to the second power. And what you do to one side, you do to the other. From here, this radical and this two is gonna cancel. And what we're left with on the inside 
which is just the inside, which is x squared plus 5x plus 11 is equal to 5 squared. It's going to be 25. Now from here, what we want to do is we see on the left hand side that it's a trinomial. So we want to get all of our terms over to that side. So in this case, what we want to do is subtract 25 from both sides like that. And now these 25s are going to cancel. And what we're going to have is x squared plus 5x minus 14. And that's going to be equal to 0. And now that we see we have this trinomial here, and we can go ahead and factor. Factoring, we want two binomials, and then that's going to be equal to 0. So what we do is we look for two numbers that when you multiply gives negative 14, but when you add them, it's going to give us positive 5. So in this case, it's going to be x plus 7, and x minus 2 is equal to 0. From here, what we do is we solve each one of these equations. So we'll take a look at this first binomial here, and I'm going to do this on the right hand side. We have x plus 7 is equal to 0. And when you get x by itself, you subtract 7 from both sides. These 7s cancel, and what we have is x is equal to negative 7. So this right here is one of our solutions. And now you do the same thing with this binomial here. If you do the same math, what you're going to get is x is equal to 2. So that's going to be our second solution. Now remember, what you have to do is check your answer. You have to check both of them in this case by plugging in the x's back into the original equation. Example number four, we want to go ahead and solve this problem here. So the first thing we want to do is isolate the radical. So that means that I want to move this 6 over to the right hand side. And all we do is subtract. So these 6's here are going to cancel. And what we have left over is radical x is equal to x minus 6. Now what we want to do is get rid of that radical sign. And we do that by squaring both sides. Squared. And remember, you have to factor in everything that's on the right hand side. You have to square the entire thing. You can't just square the x and then square the 6. From here, we can see that this radical sign and this 2 are going to cancel. So on the left hand side, all we have is x. And that's going to be equal to x minus 6 squared. From here, we have to multiply this uh, binomial right here. So if you were to do that, basically what it means is that you're going to split those up, x minus 6, and then x minus 6, since we have two of them. And then you complete the multiplication. So multiplying, what we'll have is x is equal to x squared minus 12x plus 36. From here, we want to get everything on one side. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract x on this left hand side, and I'm going to subtract x on the right hand side as well. Now what we'll have is 0 is equal to x squared minus 13x plus 36. Continuing on, what we want to do is factor the trinomial on the right hand side. So we're going to have 0 is equal to, and when you factor, what you're going to get is x minus 9 and x minus 4. Now, to find our solution points, we look at each binomial independently, and we set that equal to 0. So we have x minus 9 is equal to 0, and when you add 9 to both sides, what you're going to get is x is equal to 9, which is one solution. And then if you look at x minus 4, what you're going to get is x is equal to 4, like that. All you basically do is just change the sign of the number, and that's what x is going to equal to. So now that we have our two answers, we go ahead and check. Let's do it for this example. So let's first by, start by looking at x is equal to 9. So that means we plug 9 into every x in the original equation. So we'll have the square root of 9 
plus six is equal to nine. That's gonna give us three plus six is equal to nine, and nine is equal to nine. Therefore, this answer does check out since the left hand equals the right hand side. Now, let's go ahead and check our second solution, which is x is equal to four. And we do the same thing. So we're gonna have the square root of four plus six is equal to four. The square root of four is two plus six is equal to four. And then on the left hand side, we're gonna have eight is equal to four, which is not true. Therefore, x equals 4 is not a solution. Since x equals 4 is not a solution, the only solution to our problem is x is equal to 9. And this example is complete. Example number 5, we want to go ahead and solve this problem right here. So as you can see, we have the radicals on both sides, and the number for both of the radicals right here is a 5. So what we can do is we can raise both sides to the fifth power, like that, and then you also have to do it to this side too. And now what you can do is cancel the radical here, and cancel the radical on this side as well. What we have left over on the left hand side is going to be 6x plus 5, and that's going to be equal to 4x minus three. From here, what you wanna do is get all the x's on one side and everything else on the other side. So how I'm gonna approach this is I'm gonna subtract five to both sides, and also I'm gonna subtract four x to both sides. I'm just doing this in one step. You can do it in two steps if you'd like. Now what we see is that this five is gonna cancel with this five, and this 4x is gonna cancel with this negative 4x. So doing the math here, we have 6x minus 4x is gonna give us 2x, and that's gonna be equal to negative three minus eight, and minus five, sorry, is negative eight. To get x by itself, you divide by two, and we have x is equal to negative four. So this is gonna be our solution. However, last step as always is you have to check your answer. After you check it, you'll find out that this answer is indeed correct. Therefore, this example is complete.